this is a wedge shaped bone known as sacrum and it is usually composed of five fused sacral, sacral vertebrae the s1 s2 third fourth it is located between the hip bones and forms the roof and the posterior superior wall of the posterior half of the pelvic cavity this a triangular shaped bone of the sacrum results from from the rapid decrease in the size of the inferior lateral masses of the sacral vertebrae during the development the this inferior part is not the weight bearing part and thus the size is decreased considerably this provides strength and stability to the, to the pelvis and transmits the weight of the body to the pelvic girdle now we will be looking at some of its features superior part is known as the base it is directed upwards and forwards and it is formed by the superior surface of the first sacral vertebrae this one the sacral one articulates with the l5 at the lumbosacral joint and this anterior projecting ridge is known as the sacral promontory this slopes forward at an angle of around 30 degrees and it forms lumbosacral angle with the vertebrae this lumbosacral angle this and to this and it is around 130 to 160 degrees the vertebral foramen lies behind the body and continues into this triangular uh, shape canal known as a sacral canal it is it is a continuation of vertebral foramen it contains the bundle of spinal nerve roots arising inferior to the l1 vertebrae known as the corda equina that descend past the termination of spinal cord on the pelvic and the posterior surface of the sacrum between this we have the vertebral components these are typical four pair of the sacral foramina for the exit of the posterior and the anterior rami and you must know here that the anterior on the anterior side these foramina are larger than on the of the foramina on the posterior surfaces the pelvic surface of the sacrum is smooth and concave and it contains four transverse lines which indicates the fusion of the sacral vertebrae and during the childhood the sacral vertebrae are connected by hyaline cartilage and separated by four discs and the fusion of the sacral vertebrae starts after age of 20 years now if we look at the dorsal surface of the sacrum it has rough convex surface marked by five prominent longitudinal ridges the first is the central ridge or the median sacral crest which represent the fused rudimentary spinous process of the superior three or the fourth sacral vertebrae and you must also know that the s5 has no spinous process the intermediate this one the intermediate sacral crest represent the fused articular processes and the lateral sacral crest are the tips of the transverse process of the fused sacral vertebrae now the clinically important feature of the sacral surface of the sacrum are this is the inverted u-shaped sacral hiatus and the sacral corno this sacral hiatus represent the absence of the lamina and the spinous process of the s5 and sometimes s4 also this sacral hiatus leads to a sacral canal this one its depth varies depending on how much of the spinous process and lamina of s4 are present the sacral cornu representing the inferior articular process of the s5 project inferiorly on each side of the sacral hiatus and are helpful guide to its location and now if you look at the lateral surface the superior part this is l shaped surface of the sacrum looks somewhat like auricle so its name is given as auricular surface it is a site of synovial part of the sacroiliac joint between the sacrum and the ilium bone during life the auricular surface is covered with the hyaline cartilage now if we look on the superior surface on the lateral this fan uh, shaped part this is known as the ala of the sacrum the ala is subdivided in in the medial part this part is known is much smoother than the lateral part now we will be looking at some of the attachments of the sacrum 
the anterior and the posterior edges of the body of the first sacral vertebrae this gives attachment to the lowest fibers of the anterior and posterior longitudinal ligaments and the lamina of these ligament give attachments to the lower part of the ligamentum flava the roughened part of the ala which gives origin to the iliacus anteriorly and attachment to the lumbosacral ligament posteriorly and the upper part of the ventral sacroiliac ligament is attached to its margin now on its pelvic surface its lateral body on its lateral bodies on the middle three pieces of the sacrum on this part this this gives origin to the spiriformis it forms inverted e and this side forms e here so these this part gives the origin of the piriformis now if you look at the dorsal surface as it will give origin to the erector spinae it's along u shaped it's u shaped here along the spinous passing over the spinous and the transverse tubercles in the area of concavity between the u shaped this between the u shaped part it will give attachment to the muscle known as multifidus and on this part it gives attachment to the interosseous sacroiliac ligament and the lower narrow part of the lateral surface this below this auricular area it will give proximal attachment to gluteus maximus and this is the inferior lateral angle and this is the sacro and this is the sacrococcygeal notch this inferior lateral angle gives attachment to the lateral sacrococcygeal ligament now we will be looking at some of its relation now on the on this smooth part of the ala there are some structures that are related to this and now we will be looking from lateral to the medial side and its mnemonic is given oils as o i l and s oils and o stands more most little stand for obturator nerve then i stand for the iliolumbar artery then l stands for the lumbosacral trunk and the most medially s stands for the sympathetic chain and these all structures are overlapped by this vast major muscle now we look at the pelvic surface there are median sacral vessels in the median plane and in this median plane and then there are sympathetic trunk along this medial margin on the both sides we will find the sympathetic trunk now we we'll look at the structures which are pass which are passing through these foramina now the pelvic sacral foramina this transmits with the ventral rami of the upper four sacral nerves the sacral the lateral sacral iliac and arteries the dorsal sacral foramina transmit the dorsal rami of the upper four sacral nerves now the structures which emerges from the sacral hiatus are the fifth sacral nerve then a coccygeal nerve and the phylum terminale which passes to the coccyx now if we we'll talk of its anatomical position it is defined as the pelvic surface which will face forward and downwards the upper surface of the body of the first sacral vertebra slopes forward at an angle of 30 degrees and the upper end of the sacral canal is directed almost directly upwards this part must be directed exactly upwards and slightly backwards so it's just tilted little bit backwards and the pelvic surface hold it anteriorly this will form its anatomical position that's all about the sacrum Thanks for watching.